As a park ranger in Yosemite, I've had quite a few experiences that made me question everything I know. We are not alone out there, and there absolutely is life after death. I could go on and on about every experience I've had, but I'll tell you about a recent one that seriously wigged me out. I was instructed to remove this invasive plant species that was wreaking havoc on our native foliage. I was deep in the woods digging up the roots of this damn weed when I heard a loud cry in the distance. Hearing animal noises certainly isn't uncommon, so I didn't pay it much mind at first. But the more I heard it, the more it sounded like a wounded puppy crying out for help. It got to the point where I couldn't ignore it anymore and I just had to rescue this poor little puppy. I kept hiking in the direction I heard the cries. It took me far into the forest off the paths that I'm familiar with, and I kept walking deep into the woods towards the sound. I eventually wandered into an old Ahwahnechi camp where some of the living ancestors happened to be congregating that day. I started asking if there was a wounded animal around. Nobody knew of any, so I just kept searching. Finally, a man asked me what it sounded like, and I said it sounded like a wounded puppy. I explained to him that I'd been searching for well over an hour, and it sounds like the puppy is just around the corner, but I can't find it anywhere. He had me sit down, and he gave me this delicious concoction to drink. He told me that the sound I was hearing was not a dog. It was a sound that he had heard several times before. He told me that several years earlier, a boy had drowned in a lake nearby. Ever since then, his ghost has haunted the lake and has become a deathly presence. Once an innocent boy crying for help, now he cries to lure people to him. When people reach out to help him get out of the lake, the boy grabs them by their legs and pulls them underwater to drown them to death. Being skeptical, I explained to the man that it wasn't a boy's cries I heard. It was a wounded puppy crying for help. The man was persistent, and he insisted that I should never trust the boy. He said that everyone who has ever gone to the lake to help the boy has died, and if he was calling to me, that meant that I was next. I didn't believe it for a second and was getting frustrated by this point. I just went hours out of my way to help an animal and it wasn't about to be in vain. Suddenly, I heard the cry again. See? That's the sound I've been hearing, I shouted. The man just shook his head. I've heard that cry many times in my lifetime. I've lost many people to that cry. All I can do is warn you. It's up to you to do what's best for you. The man walked away, and I was left with a choice. Do I listen to some fairy tale and let a helpless animal die, or do I go rescue it so I can get back to dealing with the weeds? I followed the cry for another fifteen minutes or so, and sure enough, I ended up at a lake. It was gorgeous, located right in between two mountains. There are some incredible sights at Yosemite National Park, but this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. There were trees surrounding the lake and endless mountain views as far as the eye could see in every direction. Finally, I heard the cry crystal clear, but this time it sounded different. There was a strange element to the cry. It was almost like whatever was crying was trying to hold back laughter. I looked around and there wasn't any creature that I could see. The sound kept getting louder and louder, and I panicked. I thought about everything the man had said, and the sound I heard wasn't a cry for help, but clearly, something toying with me. Something evil. I turned around and ran as fast as I could. I was terrified. I could still hear the laughter in the distance as I sprinted back towards the Awanachi camp. I finally made it, and I told the man I spoke to earlier everything that had happened. He told me, If you hear the cry again, ignore it and do whatever you can to get it out of your mind. The boy preys on your compassion and fear, and if you let him, he will drive you to drown in the lake just to escape the torment in your mind. I told a fellow park ranger about this, and he told me of a legend called the Grouse Lake Ghost. People hear his cries and then end up drowning in the lake. This freaked me out that it was a known phenomenon, and I thought about how close I got to the lake. I must say, the lake is absolutely gorgeous, and it is something everyone should see before they die. But for God's sake, if you hear crying or laughing, 
get the hell out of there. Has anyone else experienced this? Has anyone else heard the Grouse Lake ghost? Has anyone experienced something like this? Please reach out and let me know. Thanks for reading my story and thank you for your wonderful videos and the amazing things I've been able to learn watching them. The world is full of things we might never understand. It always helps me put life's trivial problems into perspective to hear someone's paranormal experiences. Have a good one. I don't know how I get myself into these situations. I mean, I don't even like to go camping. So many times I've tried and I just end up being cold and wet and uncomfortable. Also, I hate to admit it, but I barely know what to do with myself anymore when I don't have an internet connection. But I don't mind renting a cabin on occasion. I've found plenty of them that have electricity and even Wi-Fi sometimes. But I have this loyalty to a couple of my childhood friends. And they love camping. Especially the kind of camping where you have to hike in to get to your spot. So every once in a while, I let them talk me into it. They convinced me to go with them during one of our college breaks. Maybe it was because I was the one with the fancy tent. I had inherited it from my brother when he upgraded to an even bigger one. He had two kids and a wife, so he needed a lot of room. My friends had their eye on this place in the Great Smoky Mountains. The plan was for a three-day trip with a lot of hiking in and camping and hiking out. It really was too cold for my liking, but things were going okay the first day. It was a sunny day in spite of the temperature. We did plenty of drinking that first night and had a blast laughing and talking. When I was laying in the tent that night looking up at the stars, it was almost pleasant. But the next morning, it was cloudy and kept raining on and off. I was trying to pack up and everything was getting soggy, and I was getting grouchy. If it had been raining steadily, I could probably have convinced the others to shorten the trip. But the sun kept peeking out and pretending like it was going to actually turn into a nice day. The rain turned into a mist that my friends thought was cool and kept saying how it would be fine. But during the afternoon, the temperature really dropped, and I couldn't even pretend to be having fun. I stopped walking and said I wasn't going any further, and since I had the only tent, they could either stay with me or go on without a shelter. We got the tent up and a fire going to dry out our clothes. At least we had more wine to raise our spirits, and the rain was holding off. We were trying to get into a jovial mood, but one of my friends started acting a little weird and nervous, and kept looking off into the woods. It was starting to make me feel nervous, too. I asked her what she was looking at, but she just said she felt a little off and kind of creeped out. Well, that didn't help my mood and I got paranoid. The Great Smoky Mountains are known for having plenty of black bears. I had heard they were mostly harmless, especially if their cubs weren't threatened. I wasn't interested in taking any chances, though, and there were plenty of other things that could be hiding in the woods. We decided that since the weather had been so wet lately, it wasn't likely that anything would catch on fire. So, we left the fire burning a little and went into the tent. It still wasn't raining, so we left the tent flap a little unzipped in order to keep an eye on the fire. I was really sleepy, though, so I guess I dozed off right away. But it seemed like only a few minutes had gone by, and I jolted out of my sleep and sat straight up. I thought for sure I heard something moving outside the tent. I looked at my friends, and they were wide awake, too. We looked out at the glow of the fire. The embers had burned down really low. I was straining my eyes and I thought I could make out some antlers just outside the tree line. I wanted to feel relief at the thought that it was only a deer. But for some reason, that sight made me feel ice cold to the core of my being. It made absolutely no sense. I had no fear of deer. It looked like it was stepping a little closer toward us. And when I saw the shape emerge, I was horrified. It couldn't be a deer because it was standing upright, and it seemed seven or eight feet tall. I wanted to scream or cry, but instead I just shut down. I saw these yellow eyes come glowing out of the darkness, and they seemed to be embedded in the skull of a deer. I had this weird thought that some devil creature had stolen the deer skull and was wearing it for its own evil purposes. 
there was a terrible smell of rotten flesh that drifted over to us, and we looked at each other like this was the end. When I looked at that thing, it actually seemed like it was dead, like some rotting corpse that was somehow walking around. It looked like it had tattered flesh hanging off of it. But the worst part was how it made me feel hollowed out, and I had the sense that I was possessed with a demonic hunger that could never be appeased. What happened then was so weird. We all spontaneously took each other's hands and closed our eyes and started to pray. And let me tell you before this, there wasn't one religious bone in any of our bodies. I hadn't been in a church since I was twelve years old. My one friend looked and started describing how she could see a luminous, protective light surrounding our tent. She was sure it was an impenetrable light that the evil could not enter. We must have stayed in that circle together for twenty minutes. And eventually, the desolate feeling withdrew, and everything was back to normal. I don't know what more to say. The whole experience was mind-blowing, and I was left with some kind of faith that I still can't define. So here I am, finally writing in, because after what happened to me in Algonquin Park, I just had to share it. I'm still shaking a bit as I type this, so a bit about me. I'm just your average guy, but I love camping. I've been doing solo trips since I was 18. This time I decided to hit up Algonquin Park in Ontario. It's huge, with deep forests and amazing wildlife. The perfect place to get away from it all, or so I thought. I arrived early in the morning and set up my camp near a small lake, the kind of spot that's far enough from the main trails to be peaceful, but not so far that I'd be completely isolated. The first couple of nights were normal, just the usual sounds of the woods, nothing out of the ordinary. But on the second night, things got weird. I was woken by this odd sound. It was like a howl, but deeper than any wolf or coyote I've ever heard. At first, I brushed it off as just some weird animal noise. You hear all sorts of things in the woods, right? The next day was normal again, hiking, fishing, the usual stuff. But as the sun started to set, I got this eerie feeling. You know, that prickly sensation on the back of your neck, like you're being watched. Yeah, that. I was cooking dinner when I heard rustling in the bushes nearby. Probably a raccoon, I thought. They're always trying to steal food. But then, the bushes rustled again, louder this time, and I heard heavy footsteps. Not the light, scampering ones you'd expect from small animals. Curiosity got the better of me, and I grabbed my flashlight to check it out. That's when I saw it. This creature, standing on the edge of the tree line, illuminated by my flashlight. It was like nothing I've ever seen before. Tall, easily seven feet, covered in dark fur, but its eyes, its eyes were the most terrifying part. They glowed in the light, a deep, unnatural red. And its face, it was canine, but distorted, more human than animal. It had these long, sharp teeth that seemed to glint in the flashlight. I was frozen in fear, my heart pounding in my chest. We just stared at each other for what felt like an eternity. Then. It let out this howl, the same one I heard the night before. It was so loud, so close, it felt like it vibrated in my chest. The creature then turned and vanished into the woods, the brush crashing as it moved. I didn't sleep that night. I kept the fire burning bright and stayed awake, clutching my hatchet, jumping at every little sound. As soon as the sun came up, I packed my gear and hiked back to my car not stopping once to look back. I've never believed in stuff like Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster, but after what I saw, I don't know what to believe anymore. I mean, what was that thing? A dogman? I've heard stories, but I always thought they were just that stories. Then, the thing let out this howl, the same one I heard the night before. It was so loud, so close, it felt like it vibrated in my chest. My ears were ringing. And for a second, I couldn't hear anything else. I thought I was going to pass out from fear, 
I don't know what came over me, but something inside told me to run, not back to my tent, but towards the lake. Maybe I thought it wouldn't follow me there, or maybe I wasn't thinking at all. I just ran, flashlight in one hand, hatchet in the other, crashing through the underbrush. The sounds of the forest were chaotic. I could hear the creature behind me, its heavy footsteps thudding against the ground. It was chasing me. Every rational part of my brain was screaming that I was about to die, torn apart by some monster in the middle of the Canadian wilderness. I burst through the tree line and stumbled onto the rocky shore of the lake. The cold night air hit me, and for a moment, it felt refreshing, like a splash of reality. I turned around, shining my light back towards the woods, expecting to see the creature lunging at me. But it wasn't there. The forest was silent, eerily so. No crickets, no rustling leaves, nothing. Just the gentle lap of water against the shore and my own heavy breathing. I waited, expecting it to come crashing out at any moment, but it didn't. It was like it had just vanished. I didn't dare move. I was too scared to go back to my tent for my stuff, too scared to even yell for help. I just stood there, by the lake until the first light of dawn started to creep over the horizon. As soon as the sun was up, I made my way back to my campsite, half expecting it to be destroyed. But everything was as I'd left it, untouched. That was almost more unsettling. If this thing was just an animal, why didn't it tear through my stuff? Why did it chase me and then just disappear? I packed up as fast as I could and hiked out of there. I didn't even bother with the fish I'd caught the day before. I just wanted to get out, get away from whatever that thing was. On the hike back, every little sound made me jump. I kept looking over my shoulder, expecting to see that creature following me. But I didn't see it again. It was like it had just vanished back into the forest. When I finally got to my car, I felt a relief like I've never felt before. I threw my gear in the back and drove without stopping until I was well out of the park. I've been trying to make sense of it all ever since. Was it a dogman? Some undiscovered animal? Or maybe I just imagined the whole thing. But it felt so real, so terrifyingly real. I don't know what to believe. And that's where I'm at now, sharing this story with you guys. I'm not sure what to do next. Do I report it? Do I try to forget it ever happened? I just don't know. Your listeners might find this story intriguing. I'm not easily rattled, but this managed to do it. It was a couple of years ago, and I had gone on this solo road trip. My destination, the great old state of West Virginia. My grandma had grown up there, but moved away when she was just a little girl. She always talked about it fondly and would tell me all sorts of campfire stories about strange things that lived in the mountains out there. I always thought they were just children's stories, but boy, was I wrong. This tale unfolds on one particular evening. The sunset looked like it had been painted across the sky. The back roads twisted through the rural countryside. It all seemed so idyllic, save for my unreliable GPS acting up. First, it gave out the wrong directions. Then it would signal to turn back. It seemed like it had a mind of its own. I figured it was just poor reception. I was in a pretty hilly area, after all. I decided I would just have to navigate the old-fashioned way, with road signs and a compass. I knew I had to keep going west, but that was about it. I figured I'd run into a town sooner or later where I could ask for directions. I couldn't shake the nerves of being lost, but there was something else there, too. I felt like I was being followed. Except, there was no one else on the road with me. Not a single car. I checked my rearview mirror more than I should have. It had gotten dark, and I started to get worried. I knew something was off. I stopped, rebooted the damn GPS, hoping it would regain its senses. It didn't seem to do much good, but I left it on in the hopes that it would find a satellite connection. At one point, it warned me about an impending bridge collapse down the road. With all the wrong routes it sent me down earlier in the day, I didn't necessarily believe it. With tiredness creeping in, 
each passing mile started to blur into the next. The landscape morphed from vast open fields to densely wooded hills, with the road weaving uphill. The feeling of being followed never let up, and I felt my grip tighten on the steering wheel. I even switched off my radio, trying to catch any unusual sounds that might be in the air. The faint hum of my old car's engine was the only thing that broke the silence. I'd like to say my resolve stayed strong, that my head was full of rational explanations, but that wasn't the case. As the hours passed, my journey took a turn for the surreal. And what happened next is a scene straight out of a horror film. Before that night, I never believed in ghosts, monsters, or any of those things. But now, well, I'm not so sure. The first thing I noticed was a shadow in the sky, a large silhouette flapping overhead. Some type of large bird, I thought. Whatever it was, it was something big, like a crane or a heron, or maybe even a vulture. I've heard those can have a wingspan over five feet. I was creeped out, yeah, but I wasn't truly scared. Not yet, anyway. I saw the thing swoop down near my car, only to soar upwards again. I couldn't get a good look at it, but I did see its eyes. They were red and burning against the night sky. It was impossible to tell what its face looked like. It was just so dark out, and the creature itself was as black as the night around me. It dived on my car again, causing me to pull over on the shoulder so I didn't veer off the road. The creature then landed in the middle of the road right in front of me. I still couldn't make out any distinguishing features of the beast, but I could see that it was nearly as tall as a man and covered in some type of soft fur. Its wings dwarfed its body and were covered in these large, black feathers. I couldn't tell if it had arms or just the wings. Its eyes were bright red and glowed like two stoplights in the dark. The creature was blocking my way forward and that's when I noticed that it was standing right in front of a bridge. It must have been the bridge that the GPS warned me about, but it didn't look like it was out. That didn't really matter, though, because this creature wasn't going to let me pass, and I didn't want to take my chances with it. I turned around and headed off in the direction I came. I saw the creature's red eyes fade into the darkness as I drove away. I was hopelessly lost and ended up sleeping in my car that night on the side of the road. I got back at it the following morning, driving down that same stretch where I saw the creature. It was nowhere that I could see, but here's where it gets real weird. When I came to the bridge, it was completely collapsed. It must have happened sometime during the night, likely after I had just left. The surreal realization hit me like a blast of cold air. The creature knew the bridge was going to collapse, and it stopped me from driving over it. Was it trying to warn me? But my real question was, why? Why did this creature save me? What purpose did it have? Doing a bit of research, I think it was a mothman, but I'm not 100% sure. Whatever it was, I'd like to buy it a drink or something for saving me back there. I don't imagine things would have turned out well if I had kept driving along that road that night. I thought I'd share something interesting, or maybe just weird, that happened to me a couple of years back. It was September 13th, and I found myself in an old, abandoned amusement park on the other side of the Hudson River, in New Jersey. Why, might you ask? Well, I've always had a strange fascination for places like that. Places untouched by human presence for years. A ghostly reminder of the past. Maybe it's the silence that I find comforting, or maybe it's the mix of nostalgia and eeriness. For me, it's like stepping into a time capsule. I photograph the best parts of those time capsules and share them online. It's a modest career. It was a rather chilly day for September, to be honest. The amusement park, or the remains of it, was just off a busy highway. It took a fair bit of walking, a jump over a rusted gate, and a hike through the overgrown path to get to the main park area. The first thing that hit me was how huge it was. These places are sometimes more spectacular than I remember as a kid. Your mind plays that trick on you, making childhood spaces seem much smaller when you visit them later in life. But this place still felt massive. 
The scale of the park only made its emptiness all the stranger. It was like a skeleton, an empty rib cage where the heart of the Atlantic coast used to beat. The weather-worn, paint-peeled structures had a sense of haunting beauty to them. The roller coasters, merry-go-rounds, Ferris wheel, all were silent, rusted-out monuments to a time of forgotten fun. That fun had faded away into obscurity. Existing amidst these ruins, I began to imagine the park in its heyday. Parents chased after excited kids. Teenagers screamed on roller coasters. The smell of cotton candy and popcorn filled the air. Now, the only sound echoing around was the hollow moan of the wind and the distant hum of the highway. With my camera on hand, I started capturing shots. I hoped to lock the ethereal feel of the place in these images forever. As I moved from one abandoned ride to the next, I started to feel a weight in the air. It was a peculiar stillness that made my skin feel clammy and my limbs feel heavier than normal. I chalked it up to nerves. Eventually, the golden hues of sunset faded to the purples and blues of night. The park, under that dimming sky, took on an even more haunted look. It was then, as I stood dwarfed by the old Ferris wheel, that things started to feel off. It was as if the very atmosphere had shifted or become charged with a weird energy. The increasing chill could have been the evening winds. That didn't explain the sinking feeling, the sense of something unknown, that made me question, should I have been there at all? I shrugged it off, blaming too many horror movies for my hypersensitive imagination. Little did I know at that time, my bravado was soon to be challenged. As the night sky rolled across the ruins, my attention was caught by a faint, ominous glow coming from the wooded area near the broken carousel. Two red orbs, kind of like a pair of giant fireflies, idled in the darkness. I strained my eyes, my heart pounding, trying to figure out what it could be. It wasn't fireflies, after all. Wrong color, wrong size. Too still. As I focused, the glow intensified into a pair of fiery, luminescent eyes. They were too high above the ground to belong to any animal. I watched as a dark figure began to take shape around those burning eyes. It stood taller than any man, seemingly cloaked in darkness itself. My usually trustworthy compass, hanging around my neck, began to twitch and spin erratically, as if reacting to some sort of invisible magnetic force. I could feel prickles of electricity running wild, raising the hairs on my arms. My heart pounded like a drum in my chest, and all I could hear was my own racing breath. I didn't think I'd miss the humming engines of the highway so soon. Then the shadow moved. Its form grew more distinct under the moonlight. Its body was noticeably humanoid, but was still obscured by the darkness. There were wings, enormous wings almost the length of its body, fear gripping me. I fumbled with my camera, trying to capture a shot, but the figure remained just beyond the clarity of my lens, lurking as an ill-defined shadow in the photos. As I watched, wings unfurled. Now, and this isn't a term I throw around lightly, but what stood before me was nothing short of demonic. It wasn't just its appearance, either. It was how it made me feel. I was torn between bolting away and standing my ground, faced with that strong sense of foreboding. Making what I soon realized was the right call, I turned tail and ran, all the way back, through the abandoned park and past the broken gate. I felt the gaze of those fiery eyes tracking me from overhead. They were like burning embers pressed up against my back. The days that followed were filled with a mix of fear, curiosity, and mostly disbelief. I questioned myself, whether it was a trick of the light or my overworked imagination playing with me again. It wasn't until I ran into some stories about a similarly described Mothman, a cryptid that was said to be an omen of disaster, that I got hit with a flash of understanding. All those local legends I'd heard growing up didn't seem like made-up stories anymore, but was there any truth to them? Looking back now, I can't help but feel some strange sense of pride at how I reacted. 
being face to face with something as bizarre as this creature, possibly a myth come alive, sends my brain haywire. But there's also an odd sense of exhilaration. It might sound like something straight out of a B-grade horror flick, or you might find a good laugh in it, but every word of it is the truth. As for me, I have a new respect for folklore, and more than anything, I now know that some places and times are better left alone. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts on this.